And welcome back to Life on Rehearse. My name is Matt Delvecchio, specializing in downsizing, home care, and the senior living industry. My co-host, Corey Sirota, is off this week. Thank you for joining me this Saturday afternoon, whether you're at home or in your car doing some errands or uh, maybe battling some traffic. Um, so as mentioned, Corey is off today. So I figured I would deal with some guy topics, specifically prostate health couple of stats for you. Now, according to the Canadian Cancer Society, prostate cancer is the most common cancer among Canadian men, excluding non-melanoma skin cancers. It is the third leading cause of death from cancer in men in Canada. In fact, in 2021, 24,000 Canadian men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. In fact, they were diagnosed with prostate cancer, and this represents 20% of all new cancer cases in men in 2021. And on average, 66 Canadian men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer every day. Prostate health is crucial. And to tell us more about it, I'm very pleased to have Steve Robertson and John Warren on the line. Steve is the president of Prostate Cancer Support Group Montreal and West Island, and John is their vice president. Steve and John, welcome to Life Unrehearsed. Hi. Thank you. Great to be here. Great to have you on the show. Thanks for taking some time on a Saturday here on such an important topic. And Steve, I'm going to start with you. If you could tell us your personal experience with prostate cancer. Well, in a nutshell, I'd say I think having prostate cancer, it's really forever changed my relationship with myself and with others, uh, with my family, with work, with friends, and just people in general. It, believe it or not, it's really allowed me to get in touch with my male side, which I think has been lacking my whole life. Uh, it's, it, may, it may sound kind of weird, but cancer was really a gateway to conversations with men on a, on a more profound level than I'd ever experienced. And you know? if you don't mind me asking, how old are you now? I'm 63. 63. And when were you diagnosed? I was 59 when I was diagnosed. 59 when diagnosed. Okay. All right. And, and John, uh, what about your, uh, your experience? Okay. So everything was fine in 2015. I'd been going to my GP on an annual basis for annual checkup and then also uh, a PSA test, that's a blood test, and then a digital examination um, so that's where the, the doctor puts his or her uh, finger up your rectum, feels your prostate. Uh, it takes about 30 seconds. Um, so uh, I was fine in 2015. 2016, about June, I was uh, there, there was a node. Uh, that, that means a hard place on your uh, prostate, and it indicates probably that it's prostate cancer. And then later I went to a urologist, a urologist later in the year, and then they had a bio- biopsy about September 2016. So, um, so they, now that's where uh, that's what happened to me. So six, 2016, <laughs> about six years ago. And you're how old now? I'm 75 now. 75. So diagnosed at around 68, 69 years old. Yeah. Is that correct. Most men are diagnosed in their 60s. Okay. Yeah. All right. Listening to Life Unrehearsed with Matt Del Vecchio, and we have Steve Roberts and John Warren from the Prostate Cancer Support Group Montreal and West Island. They have both experienced um, prostate cancer. I think you're at different stages of prostate cancer, and there are various types of treatments, um, surgery, radiation being two of the most popular choices. John, I'd like to start with you in terms of what was the treatment process for you? Well, it, it's a bit of a learning curve. You know, you're, it, it, nowadays you, the the patient takes the responsibility to decide what to do. And so the autumn of 2016, I was trying to figure out what to do, what to do. And you know, I, came, I came to some of our meetings, uh, uh, the group, the uh, Montreal West Island uh, group, and uh, that helped me decide. And eventually in February of 2017, I had a prostatectomy. I had my prostate taken out. Um, but I had an aggressive form of prostate cancer, so later I went for radiation and uh, our hormone therapy. I just finished it. It's just after. It's just over a year ago that I finished my hormone therapy. So right now my PSA level is negligible. It's it's really low, and 
and uh, you know, so far so good, sort of thing. Yeah, well, you know what? You just explained that's a five, six year process that you've been through, and uh, so uh, you know, it's not over immediately, even after having your prostate removed. Yeah, uh, Steve, and what was your treatment uh, process? Well, like John, I, I had decided to have the surgery at a prostatectomy, and uh, I was kind of one of the lucky guys, I'd say, because I haven't had any post-treatments except for regular checkups, checking my PSA and, you know, uh, having other, you know, typical follow-ups with my GP. So uh, I'm really one of the lucky guys, which has been the reason why I think I, I really feel inclined to give back and, and educate and create awareness around prostate cancer, which is just not happening still, you know? Yeah, and absolutely. And then if we've got a little soapbox here to get the word out, that's what we're trying to do. And Steve, we'll continue mm-hmm. with you on this post-treatment. I'm I'm interested in that. And, and you're saying your post-treatment has been pretty good. So today, what are they saying? You, you, do you have to go for an annual PSA test? Or do they, do they have to do that more frequently? Frequently, what's your what's the process? Well, uh, I'm, I'm still going every six months for a PSA test. Uh, my urologist recommends it, and they've been going very smoothly. I mean, it's it's for a lot of guys. It's a very you know, it's a lot of anxiety around it because you're getting results and it tells you if your cancer is back or not. And uh, I, it, it's not back for me yet. So I, I'm continuing to say, hey, keep knocking on that wood. You know, I, I feel very, very, very fortunate to to not have any. And any further cancer. Right. So I'm one of the lucky ones. Even though I did have a very aggressive cancer, uh, I did have nerve sparing done as well, um, which which did affect a lot of my physical physicality, shall we say. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's been really smooth, really smooth for me. I'm very, very lucky. Listening to Life Unrehearsed, and we're talking about prostate health with Steve Robertson and John Warren. They're from the Prostate Cancer Support Group, Montreal and West Island. We just heard from Steve and John. Post-treatment, I mean, this was a longer uh, post-treatment for you, five years, and I guess, and counting, how are things doing? T- uh, you doing today? Um, well, the P- PSA is uh, negligible. That's that's the big thing. You, you know, you've, you've, uh, you've, uh, it, it's all, it, it, PSA doesn't have, it, it's a, it's a gauge before you have your prostate out or before there's uh, treatment, but after treatment, uh, PSA levels are very important, and, the, and doctors go by that uh, a lot. Um, I'm feeling okay. Uh, I'm one of those people that the Canadian Cancer Society talks about as, as somebody that's living with cancer. I don't expect to ever be, you know, kind of cured, um, but I'm okay with that. Um, I'm active in the community. I'm active in our group. Uh, I'm trying to get uh, black men, uh, Afro-Caribbean men in the, in the community more aware of, uh, of this because they, they as a group, it's one in seven are diagnosed uh, during their lifetimes. Uh, where Caucasians, it's one in nine. So I'm active with that. And then I'm also uh, a guide at a historical museum in old Montreal, the Shadow Ramsey. I'm an English guide there. So um, I'm feeling okay. <laughs> yeah, life goes on. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, it's, and, and I love uh, the fact, and life does go on. We had a little pre-interview beforehand, and you both did not know each other beforehand. This experience brought you together, and now yeah. you're uh, good buddies, aren't you, Steve? We, we are best friends. Uh, we love each other. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, the wives are jealous. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, you know, definitely. Yeah. It, that's it, it's really interesting how life uh, does. Uh, you know, life is unrehearsed. This is the the basis mm-hmm. of our show, uh, right, mm-hmm. John? And John, I know you're involved in in these matters. One in seven, one in nine. You were saying, and and some of the statistics are are um, very concerning, and. Um, You know, one of the things that I want to talk about, and we're going to talk about this just after traffic, is there are some things that men can do, and quite frankly, their spouses, their family members can do, to not put things off because prostate and prostate cancer is always best if detected early. And and we're going to get both Mm -hmm. your advice as to what you could recommend to individuals, men, and not just men, their families. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome back to Life Unrehearsed. Matt Del Vecchio flying solo here as my co-host Corey Sirota is off this week. And we're talking about men's health and specifically prostate health. We've got Steve Robertson and John Warren on the line. Steve is the president of Prostate Cancer Society. 
support group Montreal and West Island. And John is their vice president. Um, guys, thanks for, for really getting the word out here and you bring your personal stories to it as well. And I would love to hear, Steve, starting with you, what advice can you provide to men, and for that matter, their family members that might be listening, <laughs> regarding what you can do starting today? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, prostate cancer is a silent cancer. You know, there, you don't have any symptoms, or you don't feel any any pain unless it's, unless it's metastasized. So, you know, I, I'm always telling men to, you know, see your GP, have an open conversation What's your GP about prostate cancer, about getting your PSA checked, about having a, a you know a digital rectal exam? They're they're so important. I know it saved my life, and and I'm not alone in that. A lot of men I've met, you know, just having that by chance they found the node like on John or myself as well, and it really you know it, it changes your whole direction in your life. But it's 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 amazing how you can adapt to those changes. So get support, you know, talk. Open up, you know. Uh, that's what our group does now. And once I started opening up with the men, I realized I could open up with my family as well. So, you know, it's 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 great to have that there. You know, mm-hmm. so get get people involved and talk about it. Don't be ashamed of, of you know. Uh, talking about these, these the, the topic of cancer. It's so true, you know, and and, and it, you know, the perhaps the egos get in the way, and, and just the, mm-hmm. just saying digital rectal exam. I'm sure people are squirming just saying that, but it's no Ooh. exaggeration that it literally saved your life, and John, for that mm-hmm. matter, as well. John, what would you recommend, uh, or what advice would you have for men and their families? Um, start seeing your GP, as uh, Steve said, and start doing that at 50 if you're a Caucasian. If you're Afro-Caribbean background, 40. Start seeing somebody, seeing a doctor at 40 years old because it's more aggressive with the Afro-Caribbean community than it is with Caucasians. And the other thing that is out there in a lot of people's minds is that prostate cancer is an old man's disease and that Mm -hmm. you're going to die of something else before you die of prostate cancer. Um, Not so. I mean, it's possible. There's there's slow-growing forms. But um, if you have um, uh, family members, uh, especially men in your family that have been diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer, there's a likelihood uh, that you could also have, uh, there's a hereditary factor, it's about 20%. And also breast cancer, if breast cancer tends to be in your family, maybe uh, prostate cancer will be uh, also on the male side as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, such an important point, and and uh, I agree. If you are listening, you're a family member, and you're looking at your dad, your husband, your grandfather. It is nothing to get a blood test done, a PC, a PSA. Um, try to get your GP, and I know that's not easy. We just got to text what yeah. happens if you don't have a GP, but try mm-hmm. to at least get a blood test. Get the ball rolling and push your partner, your friend, your family member to uh, to get some testing done. All right, I want to talk about your wonderful organization, Steve. You're the president of the Prostate mm-hmm. Cancer Support Group Montreal and West Island. Uh, can you give us an idea of what support is offered? Well, yeah. Uh, you know, we've been around for the last 25 years at least. A few more, actually. So, you know, we're not just like a, you know, a shot-in-the-dark group. We've been doing this for a long time. We offer support. We, you know, we, we have a Zoom meetings once a month where we have presentations from doctors where you get a chance to actually speak with the doctor uh you know about personal stuff and and they're they're they're, they're, they open it they open up the door for you you know uh we offer all those kinds of supports we we offer peer-to-peer support we have a helpline that we have men can call they don't want to go online with us they can just you know speak to one of us personally and we often will network uh with other men who have had similar diagnoses and and we set that up, you know. So it's it's really a great and, and an amazing group of men, by the way. The steering committee that I, I have, they're just unbelievable guys. They've they've all had prostate cancer, and so so they know where it's at, you know. So it's a great place to go. It's a great place to make new friends. And you know, our meetings are open to everybody. They're open to the partners. They're open to the families. They're open to your friends. 
you know, we encourage everyone to come along and just open up the conversation. You're listening to Life Unrehearsed, Matt Del Vecchio, where we're talking prostate health with Steve Robertson and John Warren. And Steve was just talking about Prostate Cancer Support Group Montreal and West Island. Uh, Steve's the president and John is the vice president. Now, uh, John, from what I understand, there's regular meetings. And who can attend these meetings? What's discussed? And, and um, I would assume you're doing some online meetings, are you? Or are you doing physical yeah. meetings? Yeah, ever since the shutdown, uh, COVID shutdown, March of uh, 2020, uh, we'd be meeting online. Um, so we meet once a month uh, on Thursday, fourth Thursday of yeah, every month four. at 7.30. And uh, it's a Zoom Zoom meetings, uh, so you need to register through our website to to go to those meetings. Uh, I could tell you what it is. It's PCSG Montreal West Island dot org. That's our uh, that's our website, and so you can register uh, on there at, at that site for our meetings. We have, as Steve said, doctors. We have dietitians, physiotherapists. We have people talking about about mindfulness, uh, and then occasionally we have peer to peer meetings. So men are talking about their own personal uh, problems with prostate cancer. They bring those uh, issues up uh, at those meetings, and it's quite amazing how open uh, guys are when they're talking. Uh, when they feel secure, it, it, we, we call it a room. And what stays in the room, what's talked about in the room stays in the room. So it's a, it's a very good uh, avenue for uh, men. Yeah, I really like that peer-to-peer. And it's and it's amazing that you we even have to get to that level being men. But you're right. These are very personal conversations. Um, perhaps you're not comfortable bringing them up with anyone. But when you're in uh, with the guys going through very <laughs> similar experiences, I would imagine it's a great forum for people to open up and discuss their challenges. Yeah, you know, at the meetings we laugh, we cry. You know, they're they're serious meetings, but when you leave that meeting, I know a lot of guys feel a lot better. You know, they they feel like they've had a chance to to, to really express themselves, and 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 maybe it's something they wouldn't have talked about their partners with before the meeting. But uh, quite a lot of guys, after they've had the meeting, they they feel a sense of uh, you know, oh, it's okay, I can talk about that now. Great meetings, really good meetings. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny you mentioned that the guys aren't the best. Perhaps we're generalizing and stereotyping a little bit, mm-hmm. but the reality is this is the fact. Uh, we could learn from women in the way they can communicate, and, and men tend to hold back and, and uh, maybe not comfortable talking about these things. So, um, John, if you just want to repeat your website, and then I don't know if you've got the phone number because I found that interesting too. You could simply pick up a phone and maybe talk to someone, but let's start with that website once again, and this is for process. State Cancer Support Group, Montreal and West Island. So if people want to look up the website, what is it, John? Uh, PCSG, Montreal, West Island, dot org. And uh, let's see, I have to find our phone number. Steve, do you have a phone number? I do have the phone number. It's 514-694-6412. All right. And so. there's a wealth of information out there, good, reliable information. Um, there's a bunch of... Um, uh, vi- there's a video library with a group call in in Mont- uh, in uh, BC called uh, Prostate Cancer Support Canada. If you Google that, you'll get um, all kinds of doctors talking about issues around prostate cancer. And, th- and I was on I was on the American uh, Cancer Society uh, site this morning. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, Canadian Cancer Society. There's some good, reliable sources of information out there that will help you if you're especially newly diagnosed to uh, to try to find answers and try to come up with a, what what your approach is going to be. Yeah, wonderful. I mean, tons of resources out there. So please reach out to uh, to whoever you can, and it would be a good start with the the uh, the prostate. Your your wonderful group called Prostate Cancer Support Group, Montreal and West Island. Steve Roberts and John Warren, thank you very much for coming on. Great. Real pleasure. All right. Steve Robertson and John Warren from, again, the Prostate Cancer Support Group, Montreal and West Island. Well, that's a wrap. Please join us next week as we'll be talking about how technology is helping out seniors and their families live healthier, safer, and happier lives. And we're going to meet the creator of Joyful Packages, gifts that are specially curated for patients in treatment and in recovery by cancer survivor Joy Rogers. Thank you for tuning into Life on Rehearse. And as a reminder for all your inquiries or assistance with navigating 
providing home care, seniors, residences, or downsizing, be my pleasure to help. Our services are completely free. You could look us up under Lianus Senior Transition Support. Many thanks to our technical producer, Dean. Great job, Dean. You could listen to Life on Our Hearst here on CJD 800 every Saturday at 3 p.m.